Javon is an interesting character. I keep calling him the perfect noir anti-hero. What do I mean by that? Well, the first thing we see is Don Giovanni run out into the street. Donna Anna is chasing him because he has attacked her in her bedroom. He attacks her again in the middle of the street. Suddenly her father shows up with a gun to protect her. Giovanni overpowers the old man and shoots him with the same gun. And we're only four and a half minutes into the storytelling, so we have no doubt as audience members exactly who this man is. And yet now we're going to spend two and a half hours being ourselves seduced by him. He sings beautifully. He looks great. He does everything without effort, much like Robert Mitchum or Humphrey Bogart or any of our favorite noir anti-heroes. And the more I began to think about film noir, the, the tropes, the way that characters worked, I realized that there was this amazing correspondence. And I thought, especially for an American audience, to remake Giovanni as noir would help people understand the story and would give us something to do that is so visually exciting and interesting. This entire production is black and white. All of the costumes are black, white, gray. There's tons of pattern and texture, so you don't really notice unless you stop to think about it. And we try to keep that same idea in the lighting. There is very little color in the lighting and the scenery. The exception to this is the red lipstick of the ladies, the red blood, and a wonderful blue neon sign in Giovanni's nightclub. Many times in noir films, there's a swanky nightclub scene, and you want something that sort of says high style. And I think nothing says high style than having a sign that lights up and says, Giovanni's. One of the things that, that the noir concept does is it lets me empower the women. Because the characters are so familiar, and everybody should know who they are, you see a woman walk in in a fabulous white suit with a tilted hat who gives as good as she gets, you understand that she's powerful, that she's the femme fatale. I hope that having those tropes helps us differentiate the women and makes people pay attention to the things that are actually happening. You don't have to work very hard to understand the relationship between the characters. So that frees everybody in the audience up to then think about what are the consequences of the things that Don Giovanni does? This guy who is outside of the law, who is more amoral than immoral, perhaps, who we like and we give ourselves permission to like because we know he's gonna get it in the end. Right.